PHP now has dependency management. Uh, so if you've used uh, NPM or Bundler in other technologies, then we now have something quite similar. What this means is it means that within your project, you can just specify the dependencies in a machine-readable manner. And then Composer can come along and make sure that those are all in place for you. You've got all the dependencies. You've got their dependencies. Uh, and it's very easy to manage compatibility between versions. Uh, so all of this is a tool called Composer. And its website is at getcomposer.org. You go there and find out how to install it for your system. But it's basically super straightforward. Once you've got Composer installed, whether you install it system-wide or I just use a FAR file that I keep up to date on my machine, you can start to manage your dependencies. So to do this, you describe your dependencies in a manner that Composer can understand. It speaks JSON, so we create a file called composer.json. Then we just say to Composer, Composer install. Composer will have a look at your composer.json file. It will work out what the right versions will be, download them all for you. And it also writes a file called composer.lock. This describes exactly what versions have been installed. And you will keep both composer.json and composer.lock under source control. This means when someone else checks out your project and wants to install the dependencies, they run Composer install. And it'll look at the .lock file and just bring down exactly the same versions of those packages. So you don't get somebody who's on 2.1 and someone else is on 2.4, depending when you downloaded the libraries. It lets you manage all of that, so everyone using the project will get the same versions. If you want to upgrade the versions, you can edit composer.json and then run a composer update that updates composer.lock. I said that you want composer.json and composer.lock to be under source control. However, you need to git ignore your vendor folder. So always exclude the vendor folder from source control, because that's where Composer will bring your libraries. And one of the whole points of the exercise is to avoid having dependencies that you have to check in and transfer every time you're working with your source control system. So let's try a little example then with managing dependencies. I'd like to include Monolog in a new project. So here I'm on packagist.org. Packagist is a public repository for where people put their composer packages. So for public packages, this is the best place to, to come to look. I know that I want Monolog, so I go to the Monolog page. I really want the development branch, but if I scroll down, I can grab this 1.10 version. So I'm going to grab the require line there, just copying and pasting it. And I'll put it in my composer.json file. So like I say, it's uh, JSON format. So we'll get require. And then I'm going to require this monolog version. So composer.json. So I'm just going to use that far that I said I had. You can install it on the command line or use the far file as you wish. And we'll run composer install. I don't have a .lock file. So composer.json, Composer will fall back to composer.json, and it'll install Monolog for me. Now, Monolog depends on the PSR log uh, standards. If you were watching the earlier chapters in this course, then I was just talking about PSR3 and Monolog and the, uh, and the logging standards. I also get some information about some, some other stuff that Monolog suggests. So it's just signposting me if I want to store things for Greylog or output to Elasticsearch or whatever. I don't need that right now, uh, but it could be useful to know. It's also written a .lock file, and it says that it's generating the autoload files. Let's have a look at what's going on here. I had composer.json. And now I've got composer.lock as well. And if we have a look, what's in there is you can see it gives very specific information about exactly what we've actually pulled. 
and that's to make sure that we get the same version when another person composer installs, once I've checked this into source control, their composer install will use composer.lock. Uh, and so they will get exactly the same library versions, even if there's a new minor release um, of that. The documentation on the getcomposer.org site is really, really comprehensive. Um, I don't want to run through loads of kind of code based examples here, but um, some things you definitely need to know. You don't need to specify an exact version number. You can do 1.10.star. Um, and you can also do things like you can do 2.1, tilde 2.1, which will give you 2.1 or 2.2 or 2.3, but not 3 point anything. So it gives you sort of approximately the right number. That lets you run Composer update and update if you know that the minor versions are probably safe. You might try an update. and. Uh, just check everything works fine, run your test suites, and so on. You can require as many packages as you like, and you can also denote your development packages separate from your packages that are required to run your application. This lets you get things like um, your build scripts, your thing files, uh, those kinds of tools available on everyone's development platforms, and then on production when you're, well not on production, but on your build server when you're running Composer uh, you do Composer install, you can do dash dash no dev and that won't install the, the dev packages, only the ones that are part of the code that you're actually going to deploy. That's quite useful to know. The other thing which I find isn't well known about Composer but is super useful in a more commercial environment is that you can pull in your own packages um, and I'm going to talk in the next section about how you can publish your own packages and how to use your own packages. So if you have some code which you want to maintain separately and then include in another application or several applications that are made by your organization, Composer makes that pretty easy as well. Um, so watch the next chapter because I have some examples for you.